The Peregrine's Journey, A Story of Migration by Madeline Dunphy, illustrated by Kristen Kest. The peregrine falcon wakes up on a cliff in Alaska. She perched, perches near the nest where she raised her chicks this summer. Even though it's only September, it's already snowed and the puddles are covered with ice. She ruffles her feathers to try to keep warm, but she's restless. As the day passes, the weather will only get colder and there will be less and less sunlight. Finally, the time has come for her to leave. She takes one look at her Alaska home and then begins her migration south. She will fly all the way from Alaska to Argentina, a distance of more than 8,000 miles. It will take her about two months. If you tried walking that far, it would take you more than three years. The peregrine flies over the Yukon. You might wonder how she knows where she's going. She doesn't have a map or a compass, but she has something even better, instinct. The peregrine was born knowing where to fly. She also has very good eyesight. From high in the sky, she can see far away in all directions. She sees the coastline, a wide flowing river, and some mountains with high peaks. To her, the mountains and rivers are like maps and street signs. These landmarks help her know where she is. The peregrine arrives in British Columbia. The trees are so thick and grow so closely together that she cannot see the ground. Her wings beat up and down in a steady rhythm. She has already flown a hundred miles today. Through an opening in the tree, she sees a freeway. The peregrine is such a strong flyer that she travels almost as fast as the people and their cars below. The peregrine la lands in Seattle, Washington. She perches on the windowsill of an office building and looks down. Far below, amidst the honking cars, traffic lights, and rushing people, she notices something that interests her. It's a pigeon. She watches it fly from the sidewalk to a tree and then to a building across the street. Pigeons are one of the favorite foods, so there is plenty for her to eat in the city. The peregrine must hunt every day to feed herself. From a mountain ledge in Utah, she sees a dove flying below. She plunges off the mountain, folds her wings, and dives headfirst onto her prey. The injured dove tumbles toward earth, but before it can hit the ground, the peregrine swoops down and catches it. She carries the dove back up to a mountain ledge where she, is picked, where she picks it apart with her razor sharp beak and talons. After she finishes her meal, the peregrine finds some water to bathe in. Eating can be very messy, and because of this, she always stays near water. Today, she bathes in a desert pool in New Mexico. She splashes around, flapping her wings and dipping her head in and out of the water until every feather is wet. One by one, she carefully preens each feather with her beak. To get dry, she shakes the water from her feathers, much as a dog shakes water from its fur. She's now ready to continue her journey south. Mm. She lands on the Texas coast. Many other migrating peregrines also stop here during the month of October because there's so many kinds of birds to eat. The golden plover, laughing gull, and green-winged teal are just some of the birds the peregrine hunts. She spends several days here eating and resting at times, she even plays with other peregrines. In a high-speed dance, they swoop, glide, and chase each other across the sky. The peregrine flies over the sea with no land in sight. From Texas, she could continue to fly over land, but instead she takes a shortcut and flies over the Gulf of Mexico. At times, she flies so close to the water that her wings nearly touch the waves. Several hours pass and the sun starts to set. The peregrine could fly through the night, but, but lands on a passing ship going in her direction. She perches on the ship's mast and gently closes her eyes. The captain watches her through the night as he steers the sh ship through dark skies. 
After a few days, the peregrine reaches land and is flying over Guatemala. She feels the wind winds pick up. Strong winds can be good or bad for the peregrine. If they are going in the wrong direction, they may blow her off course. But if they are going in the right direction, they can help her fly with a lot less effort. Today, the winds are blowing south and she glides on them for hours, hardly flapping her wings. The winds carry her up so high that a pilot flying by can see her from his cockpit window. Wow. While flying over Panama, the peregrine meets a flock of Swainsons and broadwing hawks flying along the same route. These birds can fly in huge flocks of up to 10,000. There's so many birds that they seem to block out the sun. Sometimes they fly so close together that they are only about a foot apart. You might think that they would get in each other's way, but they don't. For a while, the peregrine joins these peaceful birds on their migration. The peregrine flies over a forest that looks like an enormous green ocean. She's above the rainforests of Colombia. She feels thirsty and looks for some water to drink. There is plenty of water here because it rains nearly every day. The peregrine lands next to a waterfall. She dips her head in and out of the water, taking long, deep drinks. After shaking her feathers dry, the peregrine flies straight up until she is again soaring over the lush green trees of the rainforest. She continues flying south until she is above the rainforests of Brazil. The sky turns gray, thunder strikes, and raindrops start to fall. It's hard for her to see through the clouds and fog, and the pounding rain makes her wings feel tired. She lands in a tall tree. The tree's leaves shelter her from the falling rain. The peregrine closes her eyes and takes a nap until the late afternoon. She no longer needs to fly as far each day because she is nearing the end of her journey. Sunset comes and the peregrine lands for the night in the woodlands of Bolivia. While she is asleep, a great horned owl silently flies by, beating its powerful wings. The peregrine does not have many predators, but one creature she must be wary of is the great horned owl. This fierce looking bird hunts her at night while she is sleeping. The owl has excellent eyesight and hearing and can usually find its prey no matter how well it is hidden. But tonight, the peregrine is lucky. The owl does not notice that she is carefully nestled between two tree branches. The peregrine arrives in Argentina. Surrounding her are miles and miles of swaying grasses with eucalyptus trees scattered here and there. She lands on the tallest tree in the valley and rests. This is the end of her journey. It has been two months since she left Alaska, over 8,000 miles away. During her migration, the peregrine visited such different places in the Arctic, the desert, the ocean, the rainforest, and even the city. Next March, she will make the long journey back to Alaska where she will raise another family. But for now, she's home.